the equivalence between a triangle and a square in the last session that's right that's right yeah so but uh, while you were uh, doing the um, mapping, uh, you are the one who asked about the cut and paste thing is it yes sir yes sir i see okay yeah that's a it's a good question but uh, you see you don't have to do cut and paste uh, it is easier to imagine you know the homeomorphism you're constructing it you know like you, you break it up into you, you just that breaking it up into two triangles is just a, a way of visualizing it better so you're not actually cutting or, or, or doing anything okay? okay and also you know if you cut along something and then glue back along the same thing i mean it's as if you're not cutting at all right so uh, anyway so it's just a way to visualize so the the key thing the key property that is useful is that if you are a, a if you if you have something which is continuous okay mm -hmm. so okay. a function which is continuous on two closed sets um, yes. uh, so so yeah so if you break up your space into closed sets okay and your function is continuous on each closed set and this in this sort of like they agree on the overlaps so then you're continuous everywhere Okay, it's true for open sets also. So, so if your function is a continuous on open sets, you cover your space with open sets, and your function is continuous on each open set, and this and they obviously agree on the overlaps. So then, uh, it's the function is continuous everywhere. So it's a it's a um, it's a, some kind of local property. Continuity is a local property. So so when you are building a map, you can break it up into nice subsets if you want and then you define maps on each and you just have to make sure that the that the maps you define agree on the overlap okay so in this case if you break it up break up the square into two triangles maybe the diagonal is is an overlap so the function must take yes, the sir. same values on the on the overlap so once you have mm -hmm. that then it's it's okay and, and and in this case you can build such a map from the square to a triangle yeah but it's a it's a, it's a valid um, question it's a, it's a good question let me start off by um uh by discussing some of the questions so let me share my screen let me start with a little bit of a, a discussion on uh, about the questions okay so discussion about these questions in the questionnaire and some of you had some other questions that you you raised etc so so first let me recall a little bit about what happened last time so in particular there was this definition of a homeomorphism right so if your x and y are two topological spaces and you can think metric spaces okay if you if you I don't want to know what a topological space really is. It's topological space is a sort of a set with a, with a collection of subsets, which are these open sets, okay, which are uh, neighborhoods of points. Okay, so somehow there's a notion that in, in all of topology, there has to be in some notion of neighborhoods, which points are close to each other. And so, so there's an abstract notion of such a neighborhood just by declaring something as an open set. And, and so that constitutes a topological space. And an important class of examples are metric spaces, where there's a notion of distance, and that gives you some uh, way of uh, describing what is a neighborhood. Okay, so then, uh, so we dis uh, discussed that X and Y are homeomorphic. This was the definition that we gave, uh, homeomorphic. And it's uh, denoted by X um, twiddle equal to Y if there exists a, a continuous map x to y is a continuous sometimes i abbreviated as cts i did it last time without realizing it so it's a continuous map such that f is bijective it's a bijection and um so let me just say it's a bijective and f inverse from y to x is also continuous okay so this was um, the definition of a homeomorphism. And what it really meant was if your space, here's your topological space, a metric space X, and here's Y. So in X, you have this notion of a neighborhood. Every point, little X has some, you know, sort of uh, has, you can talk of neighborhoods of points. 
and and here at every point y this is a neighborhood so there's lots of these open sets and neighborhoods of y so f is a bijection that takes open sets to open sets okay so this was what uh, this was what a homeomorphism is okay sort of it preserves these sort of these uh, these open sets in some sense okay so uh, so so that was what the notion of homeomorphism is and this is what uh, homeomorphism is also sort of uh, what I was saying is topologically equivalent, right? Topologic, the same thing. So it's topologically equivalent, all right? And and we saw some examples. Um, so let me actually make a, a correction that somebody pointed out. Um, I think it was uh, Sarvesh. Uh, uh, so the correction was that, uh, so the, we, we said that, uh, you know, the, the open interval zero one is homeomorphic to R, and I was trying to define a map which is going to be continuous and bijective, and inverse is continuous. And um, and I'd said it is one can write down um, various maps. So I'd said uh, we had said that this is this works, but this doesn't quite work because x is always uh, you know f of x is always positive. But it's, it's actually it that works if your interval is not zero one; it's minus one comma one. Okay, so uh, and if you, and as you as we've seen, the interval zero comma one is homeomorphic to minus one comma one, right? So those two are topologically equivalent. So it's enough to kind of um, build a map from minus one comma one to R, and this map works for this. Okay, so uh, yeah. So thanks to Sarvesh for pointing out uh, this. Uh, this error, uh, but uh, so hopefully now it's sort of a, it's a clearer. Than, uh, okay, but but in any case, uh, so this uh, the point is that uh, so this open interval zero one can be sort of stretched. You can sort of imagine in topology, of course, we are, we can stretch without tearing. Uh, so so you can you're allowed to you take this open interval and you know stretch it out to infinity and. And so both ends to so infinity, and then you get the real line. And this, so that these two are uh, homeomorphic. Okay, and, and so we saw various examples, and, and then there were various examples as questions. Okay, so let's just discuss those. Um, so, so the questions, like I, I ask you to identify some homeomorphic pairs. Okay, so the one that uh, everyone got was a coffee cup and a torus. Right, I mean, so this is um, something that, um, uh, uh, well, I mean, so uh, at least any introduction to topology, you'll be able to, um, it's, it's not complete un until, uh, um, so, so this fact is, is sort of, um, is understood. So, so the thing is that these two are homeomorphic. Uh, so now you kind of, I mentioned this in the first class, but now you know how you would, actually sort of what it mathematically means. So there's uh, some continuous bijection from this to this, whose inverse is also continuous, okay? And this you can kind of, so you, you know that there is a bijection because you know that you can deform one to the other, okay? And so deformations, you know, once you, you're pushing points, right? So pushing point is your, is your map, right? And you're not, and that's a continuous operation or in, in um, any reasonable sense, and especially in the in the sense of mathematics, which is where inverse images of open sets is open. So, so in any case, uh, so here it, one can actually sort of um, explicitly so also uh, try to sort of uh, think of the map from you know the takes points on on, on the um, uh, on the on the coffee cup two points on the torus, and this is a bijection, and and so open sets. Uh, go to open sets okay so so this is um this was uh, something that you said so now you know um uh, there was another um so the next thing was uh, uh, a projective plane and uh torus uh, uh, sorry a sphere right projective plane and a sphere right so so here's um the po so what was a projective plane the projective plane was where you took a square and you identified sides, but this time you, you did something uh, uh, sort of different from what you do when you do a, let's say a torus, you, you flip both, you know, sort of identifications, right? So, so this was a projective plane. Uh, and, um, 
And the point, and, and the sphere, of course, you know, you can visualize this. Uh, the point is that the projective plane uh, has a Mobius strip embedded in it. Okay, so if you think about it, so if you look at this, you know, portion, this red portion, this is actually a Mobius sit strip sitting inside a projective plane. Okay, so whereas there is no such a Mobius strip on a, a sphere, and if you have a continuous bijection, it's a homeomorphism, it would have taken this Mobius strip uh, somewhere. Okay, to uh, another Mobius strip on on the sphere. Okay, so um, anyway, so this is uh, maybe a somewhat uh, slightly um, hand wavy at this point, but but this can be made very precise in mathematics. So uh, it turns out that these two are not um, homeomorphic. So this is uh, uh, this there is no such f, and so there is it's not homeomorphic. I mean, basically, I mean the point is this is non-orientable, and this is orientable. Again, orientability is a topological invariant. Okay, so, oops, um, um, uh, so it's uh, if something is um, it's orientable, then anything homeomorphic to it is also orientable. Okay, so so this is uh, the answer to um, this other question. Then there was uh, a question with about an infinite cylinder and a punctured plane. Right, um, so you can imagine the infinite cylinder to be, well, uh, let me try to draw a straight line. So it's something like this. It's and let's say that all the points in x, y, z in R3, so that x squared plus y squared equal to one. So let's say in the sort of it's infinite in the z direction. So you can actually sort of imagine it, infinite cylinder and punctured plane. I said is just you delete a point, right, on um, on the plane. Right, so so these two turn out to be homeomorphic, and you can you can sort of um, think of this homeomorphism in different ways. I mean, one way is uh, so you already know that uh, this right hand side, this guy, R two minus a point, is homeomorphic to a sphere with two points missing. Let's say the north and south pole missing. Right? Why? Because um, so so remember that if you take a sphere and you delete the north pole let's say so then you can stereographically project to the whole of r2 right and now if you delete a point if you delete the uh, south pole also then this r2 will have a point missing okay so 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 this this guy is homeomorphic to uh so this right hand side puncture thing is homeomorphic to a sphere with two points missing and once you have this uh, picture in mind then maybe it's easier to imagine how this is uh, can be homeomorphic to an infinite cylinder. So first of all, you might have to do some stretching, just like we stretched this zero one interval, you know, like a piece of bubble gum or something to uh, to infinity. You can sort of stretch it, and and you can also so if you have a puncture, right? If you have a puncture on a surface, you can uh, so so you can push this apart, right? So imagine if you have a punctured tube or something, and you. Uh, and, and so you can you can put a needle in there and try to push it apart, and then you you can you can define a homeomorphism to something with a with an actual hole, right? So 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 you can do this at the both the two punctures in the north and south pole, and then then this you can easily see it's homeomorphic to some shape which looks like this. Maybe it's some you know sort of a spindle shaped thing, and it has got these uh, two holes, and then you kind of stretch to go there yeah some question sir but yeah the, the sphere has two holes right yeah that's right and like in the punctured plane we only have like one one opening so no the puncture plane there's an opening at infinity right so so the point is that uh, you know, remember that the sphere minus a point is homeomorphic to r2 Okay, so if you now remove another point, then it's you're removing one point on left hand side, one point on the right hand side. So now you would have the sphere minus two points is homeomorphic to R2 minus a single point. Okay, so somehow what happens when you do a stereographic projection is sort of you're using this puncture at infin at the north pole to kind of push ah, out okay, the sphere. Okay, okay so the, so there's yeah. this basically there's a the, the yeah, so that on, on R2, you don't see that puncture anymore because it's sort of gone out to infinity. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, anyway, so uh, so this is um, so this is how you might visualize 
uh, a map from uh, the infinite cylinder, the puncture plane. We can actually write it down explicitly. So there's a, uh, if you can, uh, this you might have come across, and, uh, and I'm sure you'll come across if you sort of continue mathematics. So it's, um, uh, it's, it's, if you say, let's call the cylinder C. This is the set uh, that I, uh, so let me just use another color to, uh, so this is that what I'm boxing, the set C, is this uh, is a cylinder so you can you can actually sort of have a write down an explicit map x y going to log of uh or maybe this log factor might come later so it's maybe 10 um well you can uh, well you can uh let's see so what's the best way to um yeah let me let me do it this way um yeah, so, um, yeah, probably uh, something like this would work. So x squared plus y squared, y upon square root of x squared plus y squared, log of square root of x squared plus, uh, I've run out of space here. Um, let me try to open it. Log of square root of x squared plus y squared. And it turn, turns out that, so this is the x, y, and z coordinates, right? And in R3, and you, you can sort of try to verify and, you know, or, or maybe I've again made some mistake. You can correct me if those exercises verify this. Okay, so there's an explicit map. So you can show that it's a continuous map. It's a bijection and its inverse is also continuous.